Welcome back, folks, to the Bellied Up podcast. Me and Charlie are here bellied up to the bar at Woody's. We got some paper pull tabs from our friend Katie over at the pull tab uh, station over there. And we are in the thick of it. One, five, nine, nine, five. I think it just says that you're a winner. Oh, others are just, you know, Miles, I got a, an admission to make. I never done pull tabs like this before. I never done the paper ones. I suppose nah. I don't have those in Wisconsin. Nah, I don't think we got these in Wisconsin. It's kind of fun. It looks like a little piece of gum, you know, uh, and this says lick shot. Oh, luck shot. Luck shot. Yeah, it's right up your alley, Charlie. Look at the boar the, over there. Where? It's got the deer hunter on it over there. Oh, yeah, it's got a deer hunter on it. That's fun. That's really cool. Well, I hope we get some luck. So far, no luck. Does it say luck? What does it say if we win? What's that? Oh, it's got pictures. You don't want numbers, Charlie. All we got is pictures and numbers right now. We can win $1,500. We're going to have to go back in if we don't want Yeah, I think so. Well. <sighs> pull tabs are hard holding the microphone at the same time. They are. Oh, wait, Miles. I've only been checking one. Yeah, there's three of them. I didn't know that. Oh, my God. Now we got to go back and check all of them. I haven't been checking them, Miles. We could have had winners here. Oh, jeez. Hang on. Ne- it's a needle in a haystack. So, you know, Miles, I told you this was my first time doing it. You should have known that, hey, we could have almost thrown out $1,500. And whose fault would that have been, Miles? That would have been yours. No, it wouldn't have been mine because I disclosed my handicap to you. I mean, that's like going golfing with someone saying, hey. I uh, tend to hit 120, and you think it's going to be a short round. It's not going to be a short <laughs> round. It's going to be a long round, and I might embarrass you, you know, at your golf course. All right, we didn't win. We still got one left, though. Well, then you can't say we didn't win if you got one left, Miles. I didn't know you had one left. All right, good luck. <laughs> good luck. All right, first one, no goal. Come on now. Second one, no go. Third one, uh, fudge. That's all right, Charlie. That's what investing is all about. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. But you can't win if you quit. So we'll have to maybe go back in here. We'll be going back in. You know, I think that this is partly karma when we won $777 that one time. Seven, seven, seven. But we're back, folks. We are. Charlie, how are you feeling today? Ah, I'd be feeling better if we won, but honestly, you know, I'm I'm better than I deserve, Miles. Better than I deserve. We're here at Woody's in Fargo, and boy, I tell you, I love seeing gambling in bars. I love that. They, it's not gambling; it's investing, Charlie. You reminded me that this last time. Oh, that's true. What about that card game right there? What's going on with well, that? Well, that maybe is. Yeah, it's gambling. That's why I like. Do you go to the casino a lot, Miles? No, not really. Do you enjoy the casino? Kind of. I like playing blackjack and stuff, not like poker and all that. What about roulette? Uh, I like a little roulette. Roulette's fun. Yeah. Yeah, you know, once that once that marble gets going, and you're like, all right. What, I what one time I told on? the story, I think, on the other podcast that I put money on black like 12 times in a row, and it was red every single time. Really? <laughs> Lost all my money. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. See, you got to know when to quit that scenario. Yeah. You got to know when to quit. Eh. Well, you were asking me a question. Yeah, I said, do you like the casino? No, the other one about I being forgot. a dad. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, What are you most excited about being a dad? I think I think what I'm most excited about is I'm having a boy, mm-hmm. and I think the best part is be is going to be playfully ganging up on my wife, Anne, with my son. <sighs> you know, Damn. classic little pranks here and there. Yeah. I think it's going to be the best part. That's good. That's good. Right now, I, I, you got a few. Uh, how old do you think you're going to start them with that on the on the pranks? Uh, probably like three. Yeah. Do two, you have a, two, three? You got any pranks in mind? Um, Maybe. Uh, no, that one's bad. Should definitely not 
fake that he's choking on his steak. That'd be a bad one. <laughs> Not going to do that. I don't think he's going to be eating steak till he's at like, th- what? At three, you're giving him steak? Yeah, you just got to cut it up more. You don't give him good steak at three. How else is he supposed to learn? Wait, get, wait till he's six till he can appreciate it. I see where this is coming from. He's mad that his dad didn't give him steak at three years old. I mean, you know, I, what I'm saying is you don't want to give a kid steak until they can. It's like taking him to Disneyland. You're not doing that when they can't remember. Well, he's not going to get a, you know, a Wagyu burger or something like that. He's just going to get, you know, a nice well, slab of ribeye. Yeah. Right. And doesn't eat all of her steak anyways, you know, just cut part oh, of that's, it off. That's true. All right. Well, yeah, you don't want to. Well, a little choking joke, you know. Also, just choking don't around. give me parenting advice, Charlie. Why? Is that How many loud? kids do you have that you know of? Ah, uh, none. Zero. Exactly. None. So just relax. All right. Well, I wasn't giving you advice, dude. Yeah, I might put my kid on the all carnivore diet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I was giving you advice. I forgot about that. Yeah, you were. Well, I apologize. But I'll I'll think of some pranks. I'll figure it out, Charlie. I'm speaking out of turn. Hey, does that happen a lot? Like, are people now just like, oh, just just you wait. You know, is everyone kind of giving you advice and stuff? Yeah, a little bit. But not too bad yet. It's not not too bad. I think once a kid comes out, there's going to be a lot of that coming my way. All right. Well, I won't contribute to it, okay? I don't really care. I'm just trying to make conversation. <laughs> no, I just you know, I feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. I just was saying. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's old childless Charlie. <laughs> Couldn't make the marriage work. I didn't say that. Yeah, you did. Oh, my God. You are a projector. <laughs> you are projecting onto me now. Ah, uh, Let's project onto some callers. Yeah, what do you let's think? Let's take it out on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we having the pleasure of chit chatting with today? Hey, my name's Eric. I'm from Southern California. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. Eric from Southern California. Wow, is it warm where you are? Uh, it is a very chilly 50 degrees in the shade, 60 in the sun. Oh, I'd pay for that right now. It's a titty- where you guys at? It's a titty bit nipply here in Fargo. We're at Woody's. And, um, yeah, it's just a cold one out there. But, um, you know, anyway. We're, Why don't you belly up to the yeah, bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. I went down the weather hole. Sorry, it happens sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's quite literally, we cannot. We, there's no way to shut this Midwest small talk off in Charlie's no. brain. It's like on the West Coast, they're doing like the the club drugs, and they're like, I went down the K hole, you know, in the Midwest. It's like, I went down the weather hole. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I'm just, just, you just can't. There. It's not like we have anything erratic here where, you know, oh, how's the weather in California? Guess what? Sunny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean oh. that that's why they're doing so many drugs in California cuz uh the weather's so boring. So <laughs> <Yeah>. anyways. <laughs> well, uh, what's on your mind, fella? Well, I'm starting to build a retro video game collection. Um I've already started going to my local mom and pop shop, but I seem to be struggling when I go to yard sales. And I don't know, man. I feel I feel odd walking into someone's yard, not picking up anything because I'm looking for one specific item. But uh, also, I seem to lose my ability to ability to negotiate with the homeowner. Mm. So, do you guys have any tips on yard sale etiquette? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. great question. So you're looking for vintage video games, retro video games, and you're going in, you're like, I'm looking for one thing and one thing only, and that causes you some issues. Well, Charlie, let's maybe I dive feel, into... I feel bad not buying you. Okay. Oh, I, I, well, where are you from? You, that doesn't sound like a Southern California problem. Are you from the Midwest? Uh, no, I'm actually from Northern California, but now I live here in... Southern. Okay. All right. Well, well, I shouldn't judge. Well, Charlie, why don't you give him some advice on how to negotiate with a homeowner? Because that is, I yep. agree, that can be, you don't want to seem rude. This is their prized possessions that they're trying to unload on people. Now, Let's talk them through it. Yep. So the first thing you want to do when you're walking, I know you're looking for a specific item, but you can't let anybody know that. And I mean that in your words and your actions. You 
you got to go around to and start touching a lot of things because they'll think you're just browsing for anything. If they know you're specifically going for these video games, if they have them, they're going to up the price or they're not going to budge on the current price. So you want to be the guy who could go for anything or go for nothing. Now, the one thing that I think if I know about garage sailors, time is money. Right. You're not just hitting up one garage sale, per se, one morning on a Saturday. You're trying to hit up five or six. And the later it gets in the day, the less you're going to have to choose from. So I agree that you can't just walk in, walk out. That wouldn't be very nice. So what you need to do is you need to commit that you are going to spend 25 cents at every garage sale regardless of if you find what you're looking for. 25 cents. Every single garage sale has a section of 25 cent items. You yeah, know what I'm talking about. I do. It's where the key. It's basically they take the junk drawer and they just put it on the table. And they, and they just say, say 25 cents for anything in here. Yeah. And you just walk up to that. You, you're first going to scan for what you're looking for. Then go right to the 25 cents, throw a quarter down and you're on your way. They made they got their quarter mm -hmm. and then you don't have to feel bad about not buying anything. And when it comes to haggling, you know, it's an art form and it's something that's respected by both the haggler and the haggly. You know, wh whichever one it is, they they put that price there knowing you're going to talk them down. But. Just because they're not budging doesn't mean they're not enjoying the process. You have to enjoy the haggle. Find the love of the haggle. You know, they'll appreciate you more and they'll respect you and they will eventually meet you in the middle. But they're really just looking for a conversation. Well, and so the, my question to you is, you said you've ran into some issues with negotiating. What have you run into? Well, here's the funny thing. If I do this on offer up, or if I happen to be at the swap meet, no issue. It's a neutral playing field. When I go to someone's house, I feel like I'm playing at Lambo in the middle of January. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh. It's loud. It's cold. I've lost. I'm the Dolphins in, in Green Bay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a dolphin. I love that. And we bad. know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Now. Great analogy. Because you were on the lawn that they cut, you know? Um, Bingo. Yep. Okay. Well, but is that just how you feel, or have you tried to negotiate and it hasn't gone well? You know what? I've, I've kind of just, uh, I haven't tried negotiating. I kind of just pay what they ask. <laughs> See, uh, yeah. So I think that's an internal thing. I think you're uh, maybe just got to try it one time. You got to ask yourself, what's that okay. about? Are are you a people pleaser? Uh, in a sense, yeah. In okay. a sense, I got a situation, Charlie. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna role play it. Okay, let's role play it. You're gonna be the guy, the homeowner, okay. and I will be him. Okay. And I have this. What? Give me a retro video game. Which one am I? Which one do I have in my hand? Let, let's say Super Smash Brothers. Okay, I have Super <clears throat> Smash Brothers. It is listed for $8. Mm -hmm. I ain't paying $8, all mm -hmm. right? So here's how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. I'm browsing. Oh, shit. This is a Super Smash Brothers for $8. See anything you like? Uh, oh, hey, how's it going? Is this your establishment? Uh, I sure hope so. Mm. Otherwise, we're both trespassing. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, oh, hold on one sec. I'll mm -hmm. be right back. I, I'm getting a phone call. Mm -hmm. Hey, honey. Yeah, did the uh, food stamps come? Okay. Yeah, I just... Uh, it's getting tight out there. You know, the economy's not in the shitter, and you just lost your job, and I just lost my job. And Ugh, and uh, I tell you what, I just don't well, have any anything, but what I could do is have a little enjoyment. So that's why I'm here, honey. I'll be home. I found the, the video game that will make our son absolutely just forget about all of our money problems and have an enjoyable childhood. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to go pay for it. All right. See ya. What's that, hon? What, oh, what do you hey. mean? What, what, hang on just for a second. What do you mean the mortgage bill didn't clear this month? Uh, we're going to lose the house if we don't sell everything at the marked price. Oh, my gosh, that's awful. Well, hopefully I don't get any hagglers. What's going on, pal? Oh, yeah, hold on one sec. I'm getting a phone call. Okay. 
Hello, loan officer. Yeah, I I now no longer have a home. Okay, well, do you know what the price of cardboard is? Because I'm going to be living on a cardboard box. It's, wait, it's $4 for a cardboard house? Well, I only have $8. All right, well, there goes half my money. All right, see ya. Hey, Steve. Hey. How are Sorry you? about that. I just getting a few phone calls Hang here. So second. I see Hang you got this eight dollar video Shh. game. I I only have four dollars to my name now because I just bought a new house, cardboard house, four dollars. I was wondering, my kid, he really, I mean, he has, he has MS, and this was his, this is his wish to play this game. Do you think you could do it for four? I only have four dollars to my name. I just bought a house for four bucks. Uh, and it's a cardboard house? Yeah, it's not good cardboard either. It's kind of soggy. Well, I, you know, I, I would like to sell you that at a deal, uh, but I'm having some financial it, difficulties myself. And also, I got to yeah, warn you, I am doing. I, I can't sell it to you, period, because it's a safety issue at this point. You, I can't have your child playing a, a video console in a soggy cardboard home. He could get electrocuted. Well, we usually go to the library and he plays it there, but that's fine. I only have $4, so I guess I'll just call my kid who has MS and tell him that he has nothing to look forward to anymore because we live in a cardboard box. Hmm. Well, we'll see you later. And then I run off with it and just steal it. And that's what you got to do. If you're not getting anywhere with the homeowner, just steal the thing, okay? That's perfect. I, I've run at a pretty, pretty decent speed. I, I can, I, I can't, I can't run very far, but I can run fast. Or I can do a good bit. Yeah, and that's the important thing. Keep your car running. That's what we're gonna need. Mm. Uh, also, Charlie was being difficult, but there's no way if you played the game that I played that that homeowner isn't giving it to you for four bucks. I know that Charlie was being a little bit of a stickler, right? I didn't know how it is in real life. If you say your kid's got MS, you're yeah. living out of a soggy cardboard box, and all you got is $4 to your name, you're getting that video game for $4. I think Miles lost the game, and he's trying to play uh, change the rules mid-game. That's what I think. That's what I think. No, I look, I do think you can come up with a sap story, but I'll tell you this. In all honesty, knowing, having doing a, a couple yard sales myself, um, everything is overpriced by at least a couple bucks because we yard sailors love the chit chat. That is true. I mean, otherwise we just sell it on Facebook Marketplace, you know, but we like the chit chat and we'd say no low balls. And uh, I actually spent a summer going to garage sales trying to flip some stuff before charlie and the move that i always do you don't got to be d disrespectful in any way you just go you go up to him with it and you say hey would you do this for four dollars yeah it's a classic line would you do this for blank and then they'll usually meet you in the middle yeah how about six and okay. we call it uh, gravy six fifty yeah you're and gonna get there, and every every time they they get they up you a little bit, you gotta act like your sciatica's acting up. You gotta go <laughs> ah, oh, <sighs> ah. You gotta pretend like your wallet has sciatica, you know. And even opening it is hard. Like, oh, ah. you got any WD forty in there to see if I can get this extra dollar out? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's so over this call. <laughs> the other oh, thing, no, I'm, not, I'm I'm legitimately taking notes, man. Oh, he's taking like notes. I, you guys, oh, I'm taking notes, man. I I want this to work. Okay. Now, the other thing is you need to get, get a. To the other thing is you need to get a wallet that has the cash line in it, the the pocket for cash, but have one that has a divider. So basically two different cash things. You're going to want to put the $4 in the one side and the rest of your money in the other. And then when you show him, like, this is all I got, you open it up and hold the other one closed. So all he can see is the $4. Also, oh, that makes sense. also what you're going to want to do is get a moth trap in your basement you're going to want to trap the moths. Just get a light that's always on, you know, and, and get a little moth trap okay, in there. And then before you go in, put two moths in your wallet. So when you open it, <laughs> two moths fly out. 
should I get like some uh, thin, thinly, like Halloween decor, put some cobwebs in there, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Maybe just pull your wallet out of oh, your pocket geez, and have well. and just have it covered in dust and blow the dust off of the wallet. Could be good too. Yeah. And, and bonus, oh, if if that hurt. fella's got allergies, he'll be sneezing so much he'll just give it to you for whatever. So th- yeah, just to get rid of me, right? Yeah, just a few tips there. Uh, what you? What was your question? We we kind of cut you off there. What were you gonna ask? Well, here's the thing. I was watching one of your bits, Charlie. Thank and you. I thought I saw an old. I thought you're welcome. Very good content. You too, Mal. Thanks. Um, I highly recommend it. I always uh, like it when. But I noticed in. Let him go. go I'm ahead. sorry. No, I was just going to make a joke you about you looking at my bits. but. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but anyway, I thought I saw an old Nintendo in one of your bits. Would that be your Nintendo? Ah, uh, yeah, that's my Nintendo. Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. This is so why where. Why we... Hold on. Here we go. So We're going to set this up. Mouth. You are at Charlie's garage sale, and this is a real item, and you want it from him. Let's do this thing. This is your time to shine, baby. Take everything we said. Okay, I might put, need some coaching though. I need you in my corner, Mal. Okay, I'll be I'll be your okay. your brother. I'm with you. Yeah, I I got an, okay. I got I got. What's an, it listed for, Charlie? I got a Nintendo. Well, I bought it. Um, <laughs> I bought it uh for twenty four dollars. And in that time, that was about two years ago. Um, now I restored the finish on it, <laughs> and I also um, put a little lubricant on the cords so they don't crack. As as we all know, cords can crack over time. So lubed up the cords, put a new finish on it, and I blew it out with uh, my uh, leaf blower. And we all know that the thing about Nintendo's they get dust in them. This one has been. Uh, dust reduced by my snowblower. So how much you want for it, Charlie? I would, I, I could go, uh, I could go 32 on it. <sighs> All right. Let's hear it. Let, let's do it. Well, can you do 20? Let's assume I don't know how much you paid for, but let's hypothetically say, would you be willing to do 25? 25, huh? Hmm. You know, did I mention I blowed it out with my leaf blower? Hey man, hey, I, I know we're going to I know we're going to lunch after this. I'll make sure to cover lunch. I know money's tight for you, so don't worry about it. Lunch is on me. Once you buy this item from this old guy, we're heading to lunch. Hmm. You know, um <clears throat> Actually, uh, since I am old, uh, the, the, there's a lot of wisdom that went into cleaning out this Nintendo. So I think the price just went up to $40, unfortunately. $40? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I can't quite do that. Yeah. Well, here, let, me, let, me, let me browse around the yard sale and let me, let me think about it. I see you got some other stuff out here. Yeah, take a look around. Hey, hey, he, he, he just kind of just. Hey, he up the. Pr- hey, he up the price on you. Yeah, he did. What a fucking dick! All right. I know, man. I'm, I'll make a diversion. You grab, you grab the game. Also, I think he's got his 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 lunch on the table over there. Grab that. I'll make a diversion. I'll meet you at the car. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Wow, look at your your, your gutter is coming off over there. What the hell is going on? Oh my god. Oh jeez Louise, it is Oh my gosh. I I, I can't even uh, I I really hope someone buys this Nintendo. That was a close one. Nice I can't work. even afford new gutters and where my Nintendo go? Oh my gosh. Did they just steal now I'm gonna have to hey, foreclose on my home. Notice that it's gone. Now I'm gonna have to foreclose on my home. I, I've spent my whole life savings on this home, and now that that Nintendo's gone, I'll... all right. Well, we did it. <laughs> Perfect. So this is yeah, exactly how I imagine it going. Yeah, don't steal from from people, but if you need to, and they're being a dick, and they have the price on you, you know. 
it's not the end of the world. <sighs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. You helped me out quite a bit. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I know we did. Yeah. Anytime. Okay. <laughs> Anytime. Well, thanks for calling in, man. All Good right, luck man. on the search. I think the moral of the story is just don't be afraid to say, would you do this for blank? I think it'll turn out pretty good for you. You got it. They're usually willing to negotiate. They're not all like crotchety old guys like Charlie. I'm not old. I'm not even middle-aged yet. Depends on how long you live. Why don't we just say he's trying to maximize profit? Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Well, Well, man, thanks for calling in. Good, Good luck on your search. Thanks, guys. God bless you. All right. God bless you, too. Is that how you really would be? Because I don't think that's how you would really be at a garage sale. Charlie would be like my mom. We we had a couple garage sales growing up. We didn't have much. My mom would literally go up to people at garage sales that were just looking at an item. Mm-hmm. And she would just go, we can come down on the price. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm dead serious. <laughs> Let's say you make 300 bucks on a garage sale. Yeah. We probably could have made 800. <laughs> Because she just immediately, well, people would walk in and she would just be like, everything here is negotiable. Lowball me. That's basically what she was telling customers when she came in. I feel like you'd be a little bit like that. You would not like the confrontation. Well, it's, I think your mom, was she doing that because she just wanted to get rid of the stuff? Partly, yeah. Would you guys do it? Like, was this something fun for who? Who thought it would well, be fun? Well, they were moving. It was the oh, big one. Yeah, they were moving. Yeah. Just trying to offload it. Gets liquidation. Everything must go kind of sale. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, I would probably be in that uh, realm because honestly, I, I, yeah, if I'm just trying to get rid of stuff, that's it. Yeah. You know? Well, should we take another caller, Charlie? Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Miles. Welcome to the Belly It Up podcast. Who do we got? This is Joey from Mankato. Joey from Mankato. Hey, Joey, I'm going to be playing in Mankato soon. Come on out. See the show, my guy. Yeah. I, I, oh, I, I don't know. You uh, pop up on my Facebook feed all the time. No. Uh, but I actually did go to your uh, your show in Rochester in October. Oh, well, you saw it. I know. I, I was going to ask you about that actually, see if it was uh, going to be some different material or. Yeah, it's it's uh, from October to now. I'd say it's probably like twenty five percent new material from then. I'm always honing the show, my guy. Uh, but uh, yeah, I probably not. That. Probably not worth the money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was it worth the yeah. money the first time? Absolutely, it's worth it as long as I can go. Uh, Boo Charlie anytime he brings up the Packers. <laughs> oh, oh, Vikings fan. You bring up the Packers in Minnesota? You bet your ass I do. I like that. Yeah. Behind enemy lines. Yep. Well, what is on your mind, fella? Well, so I got um this isn't like that big of an issue, but um every once in a while when I uh drink, I will uh come home and then sleepwalk. <laughs> I mean that sounds like a decent issue. Well, as long yeah, as you're yeah, old- it's not that big. Nope. Go ahead. Go I ahead. cut you off. Oh no! I mean, uh, well, so that's uh, half of the issue. The other half is sometimes I uh, urinate places I shouldn't. <sighs> Where's the weirdest place you've ever urinated? Um. Well, so there's the coffee table. Um, and then there was one time where I opened the, the laundry hamper mm-hmm. and just went in there. That was, that was not great. Well, at least the laundry was already dirty. Better the laundry hamper yeah, than, than the, you know, washing machine. That's true. You got a point there. It was, uh, it was you know, kind of smelly when I woke up, but uh, we got it. We got it clean. Okay. So, I mean, sleepwalking can be dangerous, right? You could go out in public. I know that my brother had right. a buddy at the lake who slept walk, which is not good when you're next to a lake. Yeah, I that know. would be bad. Um, so there is a little bit of danger. And then there's a little bit of cleanup. If you're kind of a, a walking, urinating guy, they call them sleep peers, Miles. Yeah. And I got to say this, folks, <laughs> they're, they're literally they're very sleepy, sleepy. Sleep peers. Yeah. Well, Sleep peeing. Yeah, um, th- yeah, no, this is a very common uh, issue. My buddy, uh, his roommate in college, 
uh, dropped his uh, dingling out and peed all over his brand new laptop, and none of them had the money to replace it. So th- th- <laughs> this is an issue. And then recently, he opened up his wife's unmentionables drawer and and peed on all her lingerie. So that. Oh. You've got me beat there. Yeah, yeah. So Ooh. this is this is an issue you're going to want to get under control uh, for sure. Um, but, but I think you called the right place. You did. You did. Yeah. And I'm glad Absolutely. that you did this before this gets too out of hand. Now. Absolutely. Also, so I, I did kind of bury the lead. Um, oh. the, the worst one that happened to me was uh, I went out to the bars and then I came back and I was uh, with my girlfriend at the time, now fiance. And uh, we you know, had relations. And then uh, my friend who I was living with at the time had a friend sleep on the couch and I uh, was in my birthday suit and just walked down and uh, slept next to him on the sectional couch. You you slept next to your buddies? Your on the couch. Buddy's friend, buddy's friend on friend. the couch. Naked. <laughs> you know, my uncle had a buddy who got drunk and slept over at at his house and then get up in the middle of the night and got in bed with my grandparents and they called him wrong way, Tommy ever since then. So, um, <laughs> again, it's a, it's a common issue. Now, did, did you, um, did you spoon your buddy's friend? No, it was, it was on a big sectional couch. So he was on like one, one leg of it and I was on the other like, oh. part of it. All right. So he didn't wake up going, so my head, my head were like, no, we weren't. Uh, we weren't canoodling. Your heads were touching. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, they were. Not that kind of head, but like the head was like you know up top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So we kind of got a three pronged issue here, Charlie. First, yeah. it's that he's sleepwalking. Mm-hmm. Number two, he'll he'll tend to do it naked. Mm-hmm. And the third one is is he likes to urinate. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna have to tackle this. I I know just the first tip. Okay, just the tip. Just the first tip on this you is... You go ahead. I got one, too, so... Yeah, you can't go to bed. You can't be sleeping in your birthday suit anymore. That's That's got to be a no-go. You got to go to bed wearing long johns and uh, snow pants. Because... Uh, Good call. It, yep, because yeah. in the process of taking those off, maybe you'll wake up before you pee on something else that you shouldn't be peeing on. So a little. Are we talking bibs? Uh, you know what? I think we take it a like step further, a... Charlie. Yeah. I think that he just wears waiters to bed. So if he does happen to urinate, all he's got to do in the morning is just take the waiters and pour them into the toilet. Miles, I don't often say this, but you are a genius. <laughs> Thank An you. An absolute <laughs> genius. He doesn't say that ever. So. No, that is that is the money move, you know. And then because. <laughs> It'll it'll actually you'll have a dream of being in a hot tub and then you'll know it's time to wake up and drain the old waiters. Because once that hot tub starts turning into a cold plunge, well, yeah, that's uh, and then it's easy cleanup, easy peasy, beautiful. Just jump in the shower with the waiters, um, fill them up and, and then the shower will fill the waiters. They'll start filling over the top. Yeah, it's like when you're cleaning out your your coffee pot, you know, there's still a little coffee at the bottom. You oh, just yeah. fill it up, swish it around uh-huh. and then dump it all out. And yeah. You're good. Yeah. The, I mean, <laughs> solution. I, I don't even know if we need any more solutions. No, I do have a backup solution. What's that? If you know you're going out for a night of drinking, what you're going to need to do is give the old uh, apartment or house the Dexter uh, approach. That's true. So you're going to need to cover this place in poly. Mm. You're going to need to roll it all out. I mean, we're t- it sounds like you're going anywhere. So kitchen, living room, everywhere. And uh, in the in the in case you can't find your waiters and you do urinate, at least it's got poly. You got some poly down or some newspaper, I suppose. I do have to warn you, though. If you are, uh, you know, bringing someone new home to the house. Well, he's got a fiance, so I, we don't have to worry about that, which I'm, is good. I'm just saying if For anyone else, listening. anyone else comes into a, a, a new home and it's it's Dextered up, you know, they're going to have some questions about their mortality. So you, <laughs> you're going to want to explain this on the ride home. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
I, it's basically a, it's basically a condom for your apartment is what it really is. It, it's true. Um, you're not doing any of that uh, while you're sleepwalking, are you? Doing any what? You, you know, know if, you know if maybe there's like a playing you know, fresh baked pie in the <laughs> in the kitchen. You know, you're not suddenly coming to and uh, and you're uh, having yourself a grand old time, are you? No, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. Okay, right. that is very good. Yeah, news. you don't. You know, a, a blueberry pie does not need any uh, cream filling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's mostly just. It's mostly like I. I kind of like think that I make it to the toilet in my dream and then it's just not the toilet. No, I mean, yeah, we, we know that this is not intentional. We know it's going to happen. Yeah. It's just, we got to take precautions here. And I do think what exactly. we're doing is we are covering up the symptom. I mean, this is a classic case of you got uh, mold on your wall. Uh, just just paint some uh, kilts over it. You know what I mean? Uh, just paint over the mold. I think there's a deeper issue brewing here. And we're going to have to figure out why do you... Uh, I have no idea why people sleepwalk. Is there even a scientific reason? Do you know? Uh, no, I, I don't. Well, so I think uh, we're not qualified to figure that part out. That's not true, Miles. Okay. I'm You're right. Don't put limitations on us. No, 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 no. I think we can figure this out. I think a lot of people sleepwalk because they're not getting enough energy out during the day. All right. So if during the day you can find yourself something harmless to pee on. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Every day it is your goal to. I mean, that's why people sleepwalk, because they didn't get enough steps in during the day. Sleep peeing, same thing. You didn't pee on enough things that were not a toilet during the day. So you, you got to, you know, and that way you can choose the most appropriate things. A tree. Fantastic thing to pee on. Yep. You know, if no one's looking, pee on a mailbox. <laughs> you know, fire um, hydrant. Oh yeah. Another good one. Yeah, it's a victimless crime. OK, um, Absolutely. yeah, now, that solves more of the peeing thing. I think the sleepwalking, some preventative measures we could take, Charlie, mm -hmm. is you're going to poly it up. You know, poly everything up, and then what you're going to do is take a bucket of some old Legos and you're going to throw those all around the floor around your bed. So when you get up to start sleepwalking, you're going to hit a little booby trap you set for yourself earlier in the day. If that doesn't wake you up, nothing will. I agree. And if that doesn't work, this is your 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 last uh, ditch effort. But could be your first ditch effort. Uh, your fiance, she loves you and she's not going anywhere. And that's what we want for you. Right. You get yourself a nice ratchet strap and have have your fiance ratchet strap you down to the bed before you go to bed. And she slaps you on the ass and says, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> now, your fiance might want to strap you to the couch because chances are you're going to be wet in whatever you're sleeping. Not in. if he's wearing the waiters. Oh, that's true. So waiters on <laughs> yeah. ratchet strap you down. Problem solved, my guy. Problem solved. I appreciate that. Plus, I don't know I, what I, you guys are. Yeah. Plus, I don't know what you guys are into, but it also, before you fall asleep, could oh, be a good time as well. Yeah. <laughs> the little blue collar kinky play is what we call That's that. That's nice, Miles. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hey, maybe bring in uh, some bungee cords, you know, but hey. Safety first, okay? Put the eye protection on. Eye protection on. on is key. Yeah, we've all had a, a bungee cord ripped back at us, and we don't want that when you got dangling things, okay? Anyways. Absolutely. Yeah. Sounds like I got to like go uh, go to Fleet Farm and yep. find some waiters and ratchet strap. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's at Fleet Farm, and he runs into a buddy. Oh, what are you buying? Uh, just some sleepwalking materials. <laughs> He bought a Lego set. <laughs> he's got Polly. <laughs> he's got waiters and he's got ratchet straps yeah. and he's good to go. Yeah. We should sell a sleepwalking starter we kit. We should do that. Yeah. A sleepwalking starter kit. That's perfect. Oh. As long as you cut me in on some of the proceeds for giving you the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah we can yeah. negotiate that. And um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what did we tell him at the beginning of this? He called the right place. He, yeah. 
There's uh, not a lot of other podcasts out there that would give you the sleep, sleepwalker starter kit. No, no. This might be the only one in the no. world. Yeah. So, um, no, that's a great idea. Yeah. Is there anyone that you think you're going to start with that you like the most? I think a waiter's probably sounds like the um, least hassle to me and least uh, convenient. Um, ratchet strap sounds uh, not pleasant, but if it comes to that, we'll get to it. But the Legos, that's not happening. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a tough one. Okay, but you might end up there, so just don't take it off the table. Yeah, what's tougher, stepping on Legos or cleaning up your hamper again? You know, think about it. Think sure. about it. But anyways, sure. we're glad you called in. We're glad we could help you. And uh, give us an update in a couple months. Let us know how the waiters worked and uh, if you need further advice. Absolutely. Will do. I appreciate you for taking my call, guys. Appreciate you. Watch for deer. Pee in the That's right it. place. Yeah. Absolutely. Say your folks. Will do. Will do. <sighs> I mean, another satisfied customer, Miles. There's just not a problem we can't solve, Charlie. I don't I think love there that is. about us. I love that about us too. Got a couple beers, got the creativity flowing. That's all it takes. Now all we gotta do is win in these pull tabs, and we'll call it a magical day. Like, can you imagine if you went to the doctor and ha- asked them for advice on oh, what to yeah. do about sleepwalking? That would have been a disaster. Yeah, doctor probably would have been like, "Well, don't drink." <laughs> <laughs> okay, doc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. God. No. Classic. I know. Friggin' doctors. Well, uh, should we take another one, Charlie? Let's do it, Miles. Charlie, Miles. you know what I love about the Nicolay Law Office? The billboards. The billboards is one. Yeah. The beard. And two, they are they are regular folks like you and I. Yep, they are. And they aren't going to be a snooty lawyer. They're not going to get fill you full of jargon. They're just going to shoot you straight. Probably want to have a beer with you afterwards, and uh, that's the type of people that I'm looking for to do business with. I want a lawyer where I walk into their law offices, and it's like one of them nice haircutting places where they got a fridge with beer in it, and it's like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. have a beer while I cut your hair. They'll give you a beer while they do your stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true, but, you know, it could be true. You know, and that's my legal uh, um, jargon in this advertisement, because if it's not true, it's my fault. But I bet you they probably got a fridge there with some beer somewhere in that office. There's beer. We know for sure. Now, whether you're getting that or not, well, I guess that depends how bad your injury is. (laughs) Yeah. So if you're injured, give Nicolet a call. One eight five five Nicolette. Yeah. Yeah. I say Nicolette because some people. Only T if yeah. some people see a T, they're pronouncing the T. Yeah. So for them, folks, there you have it. All right. Welcome to the Bellied Up podcast. Who do we have the pleasure of talking with today? Hi. Hi. Andrew from Spokane, Wash. Andrew, Spokane, like a true Washingtonian. How you doing, my guy? Oh, my God. Oh, coughing each other. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, oh, sorry. Hold on. Yeah, take your time. I'm in a shipping container. Oh, I need to get out of here. You're in a shipping okay. container? All right. Yeah. Don't get locked you in that, dude. <laughs> you wake up in China because yeah, you, you called the Belly Up podcast. That. That's no good. So what's on your mind? Belly on up to the bar with us, Andrew. Yeah, I'll do that. So, uh, I am dating my best friend's cousin, and it is currently ruining our friendship. How so? Um, well, a little bit of backstory here. Uh, I met him at Weldon School. His name's Colton, and uh, we came super close. We would hang out like three, five times a week, uh, and at the time I was single, he would try and uh, hooked me up with every single girl he's ever seen in his life. And, uh, uh, he was about to leave for Mexico and his cousin was coming into town to house sit. And I was like, well, why don't you give me her number? Let me meet her and stuff. <laughs> and she was like, oh no, no, no. 
you wouldn't want to do that. She's mid, and all she ever talks about is how sad she is and how much anxiety she has. And I was like, whatever. I, what? And he wouldn't even show me a picture of her. And uh, and then she finally came into town. Uh huh. And I got to meet her. And I was like, holy crap, she ain't mid. She's super attractive and cute and whatnot. So uh, I got to hang out with her. And uh, um, it seemed like you want us to get together all of a sudden uh, when we actually started hanging out more. And then out of the middle of nowhere, he, uh, when I told him I was actually interested and wanted to like potentially ask her out, uh, on like some real dates and whatnot, he sat me down and was like, well, listen, she didn't graduate high school. She has a list and her family's unbearable and she's super weird, man. You want nothing to do with her, which by the way, she did graduate high school and she doesn't have the list. She does not have a list and her family's like fantastic. I don't know what he's saying. So this whole thing, he just lied to me. And uh, so he left for his trip. We hung out every day. And at the end of the week, I asked her out. And uh, he uh, uh, he got really weird after that. And then just to make matters worse, we were supposed to rent an apartment together. But we ended up not because... Uh, I just didn't want to rent, uh, spend my money like that. So I'm building a tiny house right now. And uh, he uh, he kind of blames uh, my girlfriend for that. And this happened in July. And we've only hung out once since then. And I've been inviting him to things constantly. Mm. And he's either gave me weird excuses or has left me on red every yeah. Time. Wow. I, I, th- I think I know what happened, Charlie. I think I know what happened, too. Oh, yeah. You want to say it on the count of three? Well, mine's a little longer <laughs> winded than, than just. Okay, mine's pretty quick. So okay, I well, can I'm do... going to guess what you think he's, what it is. Okay? What do you think? Well, ready? One, One two, two, three. three. He he's wants jealous. to bang his cousin. Jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> Sounds a little jealous. He does. Yeah. He does. I think the other thing is, is I don't think he ever wanted to set you up with anyone. What do you mean? So he said he so. was trying to set me up with anyone that walks. Well, when he was doing the setting up, he got to choose who he was trying to set it up with. And I think it's a mm. classic. He knew that if you got a girlfriend, then you aren't going to be able to hang out as much, this and that. So. He might have been trying to set you up with girls he didn't think was going to work. That's why it didn't. And therefore, you never found a gal until you saw someone that you liked and he panicked. Oh, is that I true? I never thought of that before. Did you ever see someone you liked I before? No, most of those girls he tried setting me up with, I didn't really like. Okay. <laughs> well, Miles, you might be onto some. I got to ask you, though, is is your uh, former best buddy, Is he, did you say he has a girlfriend currently? He does. They've been dating for two years. So Two years. Ever since I've known him, he's been having a girlfriend. Yeah. What does, what does your girlfriend say about this weirdness with her cousin? Does she think he's interested in her? <laughs> uh, you know, I can't say I've ever heard her say that, but hey, who knows? Now, here's another question. How good of friends were you guys? Were you guys doing like sleepovers and cuddling for movies and talking about your feelings? Well, I, w- I wouldn't say that much. Hold on now. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Well, did you guys have... Well, we were... Huh? Go ahead. You were what? Oh, like... So we were doing a uh, night school welding and like we would, I would go over to his house after, um, after, you know, school and whatnot. And then I would just sleep there and the next morning we'd do our homework together. And then, uh, we'd go to, we would hang out and then go to school when, uh, when school started. Mm-hmm. 
Maybe, yeah. maybe it is more. Well, we were doing that. Like, I, I would sure hope so. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think I was wrong. I think I misread the situation. I don't think he has romantic feelings for his cousin. I just think that you know you were his best buddy. And he could see how much you liked his cousin. And he probably has lost other buddies um, to his hot cousin before in the past. And he didn't want to see that happen with you as his good welding buddy. And and now it happened. And he's like, oh, this is just history repeating itself. And um, and, you know, I'm sad for uh, for your friend that he can't kind of get over it. Um, But um, he's got to stop inviting his cousin places if that's the case. Well, then what do you think if he invites his cousin to uh, to something else? Do you think she's going to leave me for another one of his friends? <laughs> <laughs> now he got me worried about that. I got to look out for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to well, protect so your maybe heart. It, maybe it's a blessing that they don't hang out anymore. Could be. Yeah, I, th- I, <laughs> I think you guys just need to... You guys just need to give it a rest for a while. You know, you you need to you need to protect your heart, my man. It sounds like his buddy's going through something too. You know, I think the best thing you can do yeah, is I just be so. supportive of him and give him the time that he needs, and maybe he'll come around. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Have you ever asked him point blank why he doesn't want you dating his cousin? No, I haven't. Have you ever asked your girlfriend why he doesn't want you dating her? Uh, yeah, I've asked her one time. What'd she say? Uh, she said she she thinks he's worried that uh that I'll I'll take that she'll take me away from him. Well, it's exactly what happened, isn't it? A little bit, except I've been inviting him to hang out all the time. Mm-hmm. He's protecting his heart. And I think you just have to leave space for that and maybe even call it out, call out the elf in the room, say, hey, I know you're uh, I know you're worried that this relationship is going to get between our relationship and it appears it already has. And I want you to know that I miss our sleepovers and I miss you walking me to class. (laughs) And if I know this won't fix anything, but I need you to at least know that, you know. So it's going to be hard. I think that's some great advice right there. Yeah, it's going to be hard, but I think you just you just cut to it. You call call it call it what it is. Now, I got another question. If you and your girlfriend broke up today, tomorrow would he be totally mm-hmm. normal again, do you think? You know, I wouldn't doubt it. Hmm. That's tough, dude. Yeah, cuz now you got a dilemma. I think you have the tough conversation with him, Charlie. You somehow get him in the place where you're at. And you got to sit him down and go, dude, this is what's happened. And this is what I'm seeing. Why don't you want me dating her? Uh-huh. What's so wrong with me being happy with someone? I th- mm. and, and if you're not ready to fully commit to that, what's what's your buddy's favorite song? Uh, you know, he really likes um, uh, the go. I think it's called like the ghost inside or something. Some heavy metal band. All right. So I don't you, know the song though. No, that's fine. You get yourself a boom box. Okay. And you get yourself some, okay. um, you be him and I'll be the boom box. Okay. Well, um, okay. Okay. Hang on uh, just a second. Miles. So miles is my boom box, but miles in this analogy, it's going to be hard. Cause, uh, Oh no, it's not. It's not. Okay. You be the boom box miles. And uh, I also went to the uh, uh, Walgreens to get some poster board and his name's Colton, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm writing on this poster board, Colton, I miss us. And now I'm standing in his front yard, holding that sign above my head. And Miles, you're the boom box. Did you turn me on? Yeah, I I, I just turned you on. Hey. Hit the bodies at the fill. Hit the bodies at the. Colton! I miss you! I miss you! Die! Die! Colton! Die. Colton. And I think that's how you're going to get your friendship back, Andrew. You think so? I know so. I know okay. so. 
All you right. think I should throw like some pebbles at his window too? Yes. To kind of wake him up Start or something? Or should I do this during the day? Yep. No, I like the idea of doing it at night. It's more romantical. Okay. And start with the pebbles and bring yourself a nice heavy rock uh, yeah. just in case the pebbles don't work. Don't wake him up. Everyone uh, wakes up to broken glass. Hey, you're not wrong. No, I'm not. And then the next sign in the boom box could be walking on broken glass. Ooh, good call, Miles. <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, off subject, but I think, Miles, you could have a future as a heavy metal singer if, <laughs> if this doesn't go the way it should. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I could feel your the vibrations of your cord on that. Thank you. Wow. Uh, ladies, well, he's married. Okay. <laughs> um. Anyways, I, I I'm glad we could have this talk, Andrew, and um, you know. Yeah, this helps me a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for your friendship. I'm excited for your relationship. I I think it's all going to move forward swimmingly from here. Yeah, yeah. I, thank you for the advice. Anytime. Sounds good, man. Well, thanks for calling in. Good luck. We're thinking about you. We are. Thank you. I salute you. Mm. It's nice. Yeah, I just don't think the buddy ever wanted to actually set him up with anyone. He said everyone he tried to set up with sucked. You know, I should have said this to him, but I also wonder if the buddy was, you know, maybe he had some, maybe he just liked living vicariously through yeah, his maybe. friend. And he knew that everyone falls in love with his cousin. And as soon as he met his cousin, boom, done. And then now who's he going to live vicariously through? True. Maybe he, his buddy shouldn't be in that relationship. We also didn't bring up that maybe his buddy found a new buddy who was single. It's true. Well, I mean, same same, same deal. I think we're saying the same thing. Like yeah. his buddy just like setting up single guys because his buddy needs an excuse to go, you know, work his uh, hitting on magic. And when that wasn't going, he, he needed to find another way to get out his, Very his, true. his wingman. Very his, true. his buddy is a professional wingman. Yep. Uh, we got to call him back and let him know we screwed up the whole call. <laughs> oh, my. Hey, can you believe I actually thought his buddy wanted to, you know, get with his own cousin? Uh, I, that was really judgmental of if me. If I did agree with it, I was doing it to make you feel good. I wasn't totally on board with it. Okay. That, that That's not the one you start with. You know, mm -hmm. I, that was rude. You should never <laughs> say that somebody wants to. And I said bang, too, which that's not nice. Anyways, well, you know, sometimes in life we make mistakes and we uh, what we do is we apologize for them. So I want to apologize to Colton. I did not think I do not think now that you're looking for fornication with your cousin. And I, I do apologize. Well, folks, that's another episode of the Valued Up podcast where we're not afraid to set the record straight. It's true. Uh, we hope you guys have a wonderful uh, time. Get on over to Woody's in Fargo. Uh, Woody's Bar and Grill. And when you're here, don't forget to tip your bartender. And say thanks to your bar or your bouncer. Say thanks to your bouncer, too. Was that on this call? I don't know. Why can't we keep it going? Yeah. Say thanks to your bouncer. And uh, tip your bartender. And, and tip it doesn't your bartender. roll as much, but we'll work it out. Yeah, we'll figure it See out. See you in the next one, guys. All right. Bye-bye.